Hi, Katie. Thank you for coming to see me today in our session. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. That's good to hear. Um, I'm going to go over a couple of things real quick before <laughs> we actually get started um, with our session today. Um, so with your permission, I would like to record our video session. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. The video session will be recorded just for the aspect of assignments and also um, just to kind of help me become a better counselor and student at Creighton University. Um, my credentials. So I am Jay Graham and I am currently a student at Creighton University. Um, I do not have my counseling credentials yet, but I am working on those. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, so confidentiality, I would like to just kind of roughly explain that to you. Um, basically with confidentiality, what we talk about in our meeting today, it's going to stay between us. Um, it's not saying that it's a big secret or anything like that. It's just basically what we talk about stays here. However, I might have to break confidentiality with a few aspects. If you are talking about harming yourself or you're going to harm someone else, um, I would have to break confidentiality. Um, if someone is hurting you, then I would also have to break confidentiality and talk to someone else to try and get you some help. Um, to make sure that you're going to be okay. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. One other aspect of where, with your permission, we would break confidentiality is if we had some pertinent information to talk to a parent or a family member that would benefit you, with your permission, we would let them know some information. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. So real quick, I'm going to just go through and explain the um, solution-focused space counseling um, process. Um, with this, I am going to ask you a variety of different questions um, and you will take notes. Some of those questions may make you uncomfortable or they may be tough to answer, which is okay. Um, that's just kind of part of the process. At the end of our session, I will write you a note and then while I'm writing you a note, you will write about what you learned about um, from our session. Make sense? Yes. Okay, so when we are getting started, what is your best hope from our meeting today? Um, just talking over some things that can help me find a way to um, create a better routine and be more productive in this unforeseen time at home. All right, so we're looking for being more productive and kind of setting a routine for this time while you are at home. All right, so if I were to ask you um, on a scale of zero to 10, with zero being the lowest you've ever been related to this goal of being productive and having a routine, and a 10 when the goal is reached, what number would you say you are at now? About a four. Okay, four. so you would say that you are currently at a four. If we talked about um, what is the highest number you've ever been as far as related to being productive, having a routine in your life, what would you say that number would be? A nine. A nine, okay. So kind of a big difference there from a four to a nine. Um, what were you doing that was different from what you're doing now to be at a nine? Well, like I said, right now we're at home um, because schools are closed and sports have been canceled. So. Um, I feel my most productive and am able to get the most done is when I'm physically at, at my facility at school with my kids. Okay, so being at home and not working, um, so you're not physically with your student athletes, you're not physically working right now. What else is different from when you were at a nine? Um... Well, I just, when I'm here at home, I have no access to anything. So I physically can't even work on anything related to work because I'm, um, the way laws are, file, like kids' files and stuff have to stay at our facility. So um, I physically can't even complete anything that would be on my to-do list because I'm not at work. Okay, so as far as what we have so far, you're at home and not working, and then you also do not have any access to work um, because most of that stuff has to be kept in the facilities of where you work at. Um, what else were you doing differently to be at a nine? 
I had, well, I had face-to-face -face contact with my kids and my coaches, which, um, like, I really feel like I'm in my best element when I'm in that physical role. Um, I was doing rehabs. I was, like, cleaning and stocking the training room, keeping up on policies and procedures, keeping up with athletes files as well as like maintaining contact with coaches and administration as well. Are there any things that you were doing differently with your time at home to be at a nine? Um, Uh, keeping busy, um, continuing to do some of this like leisure activities, I guess that I like as well as um, continuing continuing education. I could do some. When you talk about keeping busy, what are some of the things that kept you busy when you were at a nine? When I was at work. At home. At home. Um, <clears throat> just doing things around the house, uh, cleaning, actually uh, running errands or doing things off our to-do list. Um, I can do, you know, uh, we were um, just doing things off of my personal to-do list, so things that made me happy or um, outstanding things that I wanted to do it you know personally whether it, you know be a project or writing in my journal or something along those lines and then how did you make those things happen with staying busy at home well I've made a list I found that um, especially through this as long as I can keep my mind occupied um, and trying not to dwell on like the unknown and the things that I can't do um, I made a list so then of, of just like various things that I like or things that I could do, whether it's cleaning or, um, you know, m more continuing education, I could, I could definitely do that. Um, and it helps. So when I feel like I'm, I'm bored or I'm frustrated or something, then I can find something on the list that would help. Okay, so great <coughs> job on building lists and helping stay organized. Um, that is definitely something that you can continue to do now with your time at home. All right, so you currently said that you were at a four. If we were to move one number higher, so if we were to move to a five, what will you be doing that you're not doing now? I think definitely hitting my continuing education credits. Um, as an athletic trainer, we need 50 every two years to maintain our certification. Um, so that would definitely be something that's off of my massive to never-ending to-do list but also in the fact that I because I have all this time I could really delve into some areas that could not only complete these requirements but really help my kids so finding new rehabilitation techniques or treatment techniques that I can utilize in there and I can also um, we have all this time so I could really actually you know find areas that I'm maybe not as strong in and get better um, okay. and I think also if I really focus on the continuing education while it's not in school, it's still related to my field, so it won't feel, I won't feel maybe so disconnected from the okay. field, what I do right now. I think it's great that you are acknowledging areas that you could be stronger in, and working on those areas would be something that would definitely help move you up a number on the scale. When you are moving up that number on the scale, who will notice this difference? You doing your continuing education, strengthening yourself in areas that you need improvement in. Um, who will notice this difference and how will they react to you? Well, currently right now, because I, we're all at home, it's just me and my partner. Um, but I hope maybe both of us will be able to benefit and notice. Just in that maybe if I find a way to be a little bit more productive, it'll also maybe help with my, my moods or just my emotions in dealing with this whole um, situation, which, I mean, will benefit me, but maybe also, you know, create more calm, less tension, or just maybe even more open communication between 
between us, just since we're the only two at home. Great. So um, with that, how will you respond to them? I think definitely um, working on the communication in, um, because this is an ongoing situation. Every day is going to be different. And so um, being able to recognize and understanding our emotions as well as being able to like vocalize what we're feeling will definitely, I think, is a two-way street. Okay, awesome. Um, I think that will conclude our session today. What we are going to do next is I'm going to write a message to you. And then during that time, I would like you to write a message just about what you learned during our time together. All right, Katie, if you would like to go ahead, um, actually, I'll go ahead and I'll share my message first. Um, so Katie, I've noticed that you are a very hardworking athletic trainer. Um, you are very dedicated to your profession and you have great organizational skills that help you remain productive and have a routine in your life, even if it's not quite what we want yet. Um, but that will continue to improve. So to keep you on the path to staying productive and building that routine, I would like you to continue to do the things you have been and notice what you are doing to move from a four to a five um, by our next session. If you'd like to go ahead and share your note. Um, <clears throat> I've, I've noticed during this, it can be easy to do nothing. The days kind of just blend together so it can be easy to not feel like I'm getting anything done. Um, and I agree with you that if I keep to my list and me and and do at least one thing off of my list or something that would make me feel productive, whether that's I just completed a simple errand or a simple chore at home or something bigger off of my list, it will definitely help make me feel more complete and that I have a purpose to my days and will hopefully make also break up maybe the monotony of it. And that would make me obviously um, feel more calmer and happier, which would lead to a better, like, help move you from that four to exactly, a five. Exactly, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for your session today, Katie. You're welcome.